we're back with another video and yet again there's air conditioning in the background you'll have to deal with that I haven't got around to applying RTX voice yet to uh, filter some noise out today we're gonna deal with uh, radiation stuff this is my little uh, radio code um, Geiger counter purchased shortly before Russia in its uh, action against its neighbor so uh, I almost didn't get this and it's uh, not for the sake of endorsing what's going on but in any case this uh, is a scintillation counter basically and uh, I'm told there's an update for it so we're gonna have a look at what firmware we have right now and we're gonna do a quick little test I'm gonna go to settings um, to device info so we are running firmware version here we go 1.21 firmware version so Let's see what the latest firmware is, but before we do that, um, I'm told that some of the firmware version is energy compensation, um, particularly around alpha and beta emitters. Now, there's some contention about last time I did this, some people got pretty shirty with me in the comments. So we have, I have a selection of different counters here, and this uh, has, you can probably already tell, I've got some thoriated rods in here. It does pick them up at some point went a little bit nuts over there for a minute in any case that's not what we're interested in we have some americium from a smoke alarm before we get into this we're going to take our little radex which uses a uh, gm tube and may have actually gone flat for the first time in history so let's change the batteries for reference these are the batteries i put in it just some cheapies when i first got it something like 10 or more years ago maybe nearly 15 it's been a while so, uh, they don't appear to have leaked, which is nice. But anyway, this has a, a derivative of the SBM20 Geiger tube, which is similar to what's built into my desk here. So, uh, we'll use three of these for a reference point here. Okay, let's see how we go. Ten years worth of batteries, I can't complain with that. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Our tube hides in the side here. You can sort of see it. Sit it on the americium. Turn the back light on a bit. So we get the occasional beep. If I turn this one off, we put it up to this one here, which has got an, an actual SBM20. And we see here we get a notable increase. Nothing too crazy though. However, we put this thing over here, which is, a, I'm pretty sure it's a sodium iodide scintillation crystal. This has other things to say about a bit of americium. So let's just let it go until it uh, levels out a bit here. This one over the back here normally sits about level 2. That's not in any way a calibrated thing because I designed that. So we're talking about 10, nearly 11 microsieverts per hour on this, whereas the other one was reading about half a microsievert per hour. So there we go, about 11 microsieverts per hour. Let's go and do a firmware update and see what we get out of it. Okay, I haven't bothered to get the screen capture software out yet, but we're gonna plug into the computer and we've got the radio code software up here and it's picked that up. It's already, it's got a really strong spectrum in here um, for americium 241. So clearly uh, it's determined what that is. It's, it's, this is the whole reason I got it, is because it does this. And I don't have to hire a $2,000 radio uh, spectrometer or gamma spectrometer to take out into the field. An area, there's an area I want to check with this that I haven't, because COVID happened and I just haven't got back there. That and I had an attack of MS that kind of got in the way. So, let's see, where is our firmware update? Okay, I looked up a video here by a channel called Surviving the Apocalypse. He has a British accent to him. And uh, now he said you go to help. And I think he said, I'll check for updates. There we go. Cool. Ah, automatic updates. Let's check now. All right, so Immunet objected to it a little bit. I'm pretty sure this happened last time. Um, I ran it through a bunch of other bits of software and it didn't uh, it didn't seem to mind so uh, I am inclined to believe the developers when they say that's a false positive could be just in the way that it accesses the system 
In any case, let's try and run this update again, see how we go. Yes, that's the problem we had last time extracting the DLL file. It ran just fine regardless. Um, in any case, uh, in the folder with all the shortcuts, including radio code 1.04, we also have update radio code firmware. It's a little client for doing the firmware on the device. So, current firmware version is 1.21 current bootloader is 3.7 uh, oh, and the new firmware version of 3.01 well they've been busy so let's see how we go here so the device is just disconnected and I'm hearing the disconnect reconnect so I'm guessing it's rebooting it so the bootloader can catch it they're gonna upload the firmware and reboot nice quick little uh, process so let's uh, move this down a little bit here have a look here so let's go through here and go settings device info we're at version 3.01 the bootloader 3.7 oakley doakley uh, let's go back all right so i've got the pc software running and i've restarted the spectrum let's um let's drop this on here and see what sort of a reading we get now we'll let it level out it's certainly coming up a lot more slowly than it previously did. So the energy compensation thing might actually be actually legit claim. So now we're looking at about 0.39 micro sieverts per hour, which is much more interesting. And we're seeing, I'll show you the spectrum that is still coming up a little bit. Oh, chunky tripod here. But we're seeing this big uh, spike here which is americium 241 and uh, if I turn the filtering on a bit we do get yeah right in that range there so uh, yeah given all that time we're still looking at uh, 0.43 micro sieverts per hour big change from 11 so um, I need to smooth out this tripod sorry about the chunkiness guys so yeah Definitely, firmware update does change how it perceives things a lot. So, uh, if I go with this one, which is a calibrated guy, I wonder if we see a similar reading on this. I'm going to bet we do. This is mostly picking up the gamma particles. So, it's saying 2.2 micro sieverts per hour. So, there's an interesting difference between the two of them. But, horses for courses, I guess. And in any case, um, so yeah, definitely a wildly, wildly different reading when exposed to the beta particles now. So uh, yeah, the comments on the video I did when I first got this and was not quite as well versed with things. Um, yeah, you guys in the comments have actually helped me along. A couple of guys have helped me along, but they've done so in the biggest possible asshole way they could. People can phrase themselves a little bit differently if they really try, I'm sure of it. Uh, but if you go back, you can find the particular comment I'm making reference to pinned to the top of my old video. If I'm lucky, I'll, uh, or if I can get around to it, I'll put the link to that video in the description of this one. But yeah, anyway, firmware update, um, definitely likely to make a difference to things. I need to go arrange with a landowner at some point soon to go and see his property again and uh, see if we can determine exactly what's down there. I know there's some radioactive stuff underground, but I'm not sure if it's man-made or naturally occurring. This should let me tell the difference. See you in the next one.